It's 5.30 p.m. here in Seoul. I'm Devin Whiting at the Arirang Newsroom. We're breaking into our regular programming to bring you the latest briefing from the South Korean health authorities. It'll start in just a moment. This briefing will be by Park Nung Hoo, who is the first vice head of the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasure Headquarters. We'll get the latest figures on the outbreak and some analysis of them. In the meantime, a few updates. Uh, ahead of a general election this coming Wednesday, South Korea held two days of early voting on Friday and Saturday, and turnout came to 26.69%. That's the highest turnout for early voting on record. According to the National Election Commission, nearly 12 million people went to the polls on those two days. Analysts say there are two reasons for the high turnout. People want to avoid the crowds on Election Day, but also they're paying more attention to politics right now as they watch the government's response to the coronavirus pandemic. On April 15th, South Koreans will elect 300 representatives to the National Assembly to serve terms of four years. And as of the latest briefing, South Korea has reported 32 new cases, staying in that range for a fourth straight day. It was less than a week ago that the figure dropped below 50 for the first time since late February. The majority of the new cases, 24 of them, are imported, while eight have occurred within local communities. The death toll has seen a slight uptick with three more fatalities, bringing the total to 214. In the meantime, 125 people have been discharged, having fully recovered. And with that, more than 7,300 have been released so far, bringing the country's recovery rate to 70 percent. Also, the number of patients currently being treated has fallen below 3,000 and is now at around 2,900. Now, we will cut to that briefing as soon as it begins. But in the meantime, the United States is now the country hardest hit by the virus, a disaster having been declared in 50 states. The U.S. death toll is now the highest in the world. And in Europe, the U.K. is seeing the sharpest rise in daily new infections, while Spain seems to be slowing down. Lee kyung has the latest. The U.S. now has the highest number of COVID-19-related deaths in the world. As of Saturday local time, there were more than 20,000 deaths, outnumbering the figure in Italy for the first time. In total, the U.S. has more than half a million cases. Every state in the U.S. has now declared a disaster. The state of Wyoming became the last one to do so on Saturday. Sign language translation will be provided. The first by head of Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures HQ, Park Nung Woo, will be presenting. So I am the first vice head of Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures HQ, Park Nung Woo. As of midnight of April 12th, the additional number of confirmed cases amount to 32. Until now, there has been a total of 10,512 confirmed cases and 7,368 people have been discharged after fully recovering. Of those people coming in from abroad, 912 people have been confirmed. And other than the 8% who were foreigners, they were all Korean nationals, and we have seen 214 cases of deaths. And this is the result of carrying out more than 514,000 tests. And we want to pay our respect to the deceased and the family members. So today, under the leadership of the Prime Minister, a meeting was conveyed, and we talked about the measures on the polling and also strengthening the measures to prevent the infection from those coming in from abroad. The Prime Minister has said the following. So he has said that with the decrease in the number of additional confirmed cases, we have seen people loosening up. However, since there is a time difference in actually showing up as infection, we have to make sure that we do not misconceive it as going back to the lifestyles. So he has asked people to not loosen up and to thoroughly follow social distancing and strengthen its measures. And he has made this request to our citizens. And also, during the progress of the early voting for the 21st general election, there were shortcomings that came up. And he has asked make sure to carry out detailed prevention measures to separate our citizens to follow the social distancing.
So last Saturday, we have announced the extension of the strengthened social distancing for another two weeks, and a week has passed since then. So this week, we have seen 275 total number of confirmed cases in a week, and this was a great decrease. And in Gwangju, Sejong, Chungbuk, and in Jeju, and in total in five cities and provinces, we have seen no additional confirmed cases this week. <coughs> And the cases of unknown path has decreased and it went down from 10% over the past nine days to around 2.8%. So this shows that the preventive measures have been strengthened. And this is thanks to the strengthened measures for social distancing and this is an achievement that was achieved by us all. So we want to thank our citizens who participated in social distancing despite the inconveniences. So we want to thank all of our citizens. However, despite this, we should not be optimistic about the decrease in the number of additional confirmed cases that happened recently. So we have to make sure to be tense. So this is the achievement of the social distancing that we carried out. However, the achievement can only be found out after two weeks. So we have to make sure that we do not see a dramatic increase in the number of additional confirmed cases in the future. So we want to ask you to continue to make concerted efforts. In particular, of the total number of confirmed cases that happened this week, around 40% came from the highly crowded places, and this is a concern. So there are still hidden risks, and if they were to outbreak, then we would again see a massive outbreak. So we have to make sure to prevent such possibilities. And in order to make sure not to see this in the future, we have to continue to be persistent in carrying out social distancing. And this is more important than all, about, than all else. So we want to ask you once again to continue to follow social distancing. So if you can make the effort, then we will be able to even distinguish the small sparks that exist in our society and we will be able to see good achievement. So today is the Easter weekend and as such there are religious facilities carrying out and participating in social distancing through online services. So a lot of facilities on top of the religious facilities participated in this, and we want to thank you for it. Thanks to the efforts of the religious leaders, we were able to decrease the number of cluster outbreaks in the religious facilities, and our society has become safer. So we want to ask you to participate for a little more time. So with the risk of the COVID-19, our religious leaders are acting out and we will all remember your efforts in the future and we will thank you. And we also want to ask our citizens to help out. So we want to ask you to maintain social distancing even till the end. So we really need your help. In particular, make sure to avoid crowded places and avoid contact with other people in closed spaces. So we want to ask you to do so. And we also want to ask you to refrain from gatherings and having outings. And we also want to ask you to participate in social distancing. The government want to express our gratitude to everyone who is participating in these activities and we are preparing so that we can go back to the lifestyle preventive measures. So COVID-19 is continuing and it would take some time for vaccines to be developed. So this will be impossible for it to be distinguished in a short period of time. And experts within Korea and outside of Korea are saying that in short, it would take six months, and in long, it would even take longer than that, over a year. So in preparation for such a long-term outbreak, we have to make sure to limit our social activities and continue preventive measures in parallel. So together with the medical experts, social experts, and civilians, and the government authorities, we are coming together to come up with the necessary preventive measures. 
and we are also accepting opinions of our citizens. In today's meeting, we talked about the following. So we also discussed about the preventive measures for our medical practitioners. So we also have to make sure to maintain the voting rights. So we're going to support our medical practitioners and those in self-quarantine to be able to vote so that they can execute their rights. And we are also going to make a safe environment for the polling. So we have come up with the preventive measures to do so. So this preventive measure is to minimize and separate the path of the regular civilians and those who are under self-quarantine. So we're trying to minimize contact with those people under self-quarantine. So those who are subject to voting will be those who have received the notification from April 1st, and those will be people who do not have symptoms of COVID-19. And when they're moving from their location locations to the polling stations, they have to make use their own vehicles and they're prevented from using public transportation. And they will also have to have a one-on-one -on -one monitoring people or something in compliance of it. And once they're in the polling station, in order to prevent contact with the regular citizens, they'll be in a different waiting period and they'll be participating in the voting exercise after the regular citizens finish voting. And this will be monitored by the personnel. And also for the local governments, they will also make efforts and support it so that we have a safe environment for voting. And on one side, Starting on April 13th, we will also strengthen the measures for foreigners coming in to Korea and for the Korean nationals coming into Korea from abroad as well. So we are going to make sure to strengthen our measures for a temporary time. And this is the result of a rapid outbreak of COVID-19 across the world. So we're trying to get rid of the concerns of our citizens and also have a safe system of prevention in Korea. So in all of the offices across the world for the Korean embassies, all of the visas will not go into effect starting from April 1st. And if they want to register for visa, they will have to register again. So for those countries that are banning Korean nationals from entering, we are also going to have a similar measures applied. So for 151 countries that have banned the entrance of the Korean nationals, those there were 90 countries that have been allowed for the no visa entrance into Korea, but now we will be temporarily stopping it. And therefore, for these people, they will have to get the visas once again to enter into Korea separately. And from now on, once they register for the visa, then they will have to be tested in medical facilities within 48 hours, and they will have to make sure to submit this report. And once the registration has been applied, then they will also go through interviews, which include questions about their health. And also, otherwise, for those with necessarily necessary information such as technology or humanitarian reasons, they all have separate applications. And also, there could be some side effects in the academia and the economic circles because of this measure. However, this is to ensure the safety of our citizens, and we want to ask you to actually handle the inconveniences. So while strengthening the measures for the foreigners coming in, we're also strengthening the measures for testing those people coming in from the U.S. So for the Korean citizens and foreigners coming in from the U.S., before we used to test those with symptoms, and for other cases, we used to have self-quarantine measures. However, starting on April 13th, for all Korean citizens and foreigners coming in from U.S. for a long period of time, they'll be tested. And this is due to the result of the confirmed cases increasing in the past two weeks. 
we have seen that of those people coming in from abroad, around 50% were coming in from U.S. That is why we are going to test everyone coming in from the U.S. in the future. And through this, we're going to be able to thoroughly prevent the inflow of COVID-19. So we have been carrying out the strengthened measures for social distancing for the past few weeks, and we believe that all of our citizens are feeling tired. However, thanks to the efforts of everyone for the past three weeks, we were able to see a decrease in the number of confirmed cases this week, which was less than 50 per day. And we want to ask you to continue to do so as such. And the effect of social distancing has the time difference in coming out. So we have to make sure to tighten our measures and we should not loosen up. So we should not see an increase in the confirmed cases. So we want to ask you to continue your concerted efforts to do so. So through this crisis of the infection, we are feeling how precious our lifestyle is, and we are also feeling how precious one another is and how precious social solidarity is. So the government is also supporting our citizens and will make efforts together with our citizens so that we can wisely overcome COVID-19, and we also have hope in doing so. So the COVID-19 is an infection that cannot be overcome only with the efforts of the preventive authorities. We need the help of the academia, the medical facilities, and our citizens. And only by doing so will we be able to overcome it. So based on social solidarity and civic consciousness, we want to ask you to continue social distancing. So as you have done until now, we want to ask our citizens to support the government and make concerted efforts. And if we were to do so, we believe that we'll be able to overcome COVID-19 in a fast amount of time. Thank you. All right, and that'll conclude our coverage of this briefing. Arirang News will be back at the top of the hour. Bye for now.